turn with me to uh, St. Luke, brother, the great physician St. Luke, chapter 19, and we're going to go chapter 19 of St. Luke, and we're going to go in a little bit of chapter 20 of St. Luke, but if I were to put a title on today's message, I would say accommodation turns to agitation. Accommodation turns to aggravation. I know that sounds like a strange title, but many times we spend our lifetime trying to accommodate people. When you get a hotel room, you ask for all the amenities. Uh, what do the room have? If it's got a double bed, if it's got a refrigerator, if it's got an ice box, an iron, or a hair dryer, if it's got you know, some of the amenities, if you got a, a whirlpool, a jacuzzi, a swimming pool, you want all the accommodations that you would like to have uh, that you might be used to eat at home. But when I think about accommodation and agitation, uh, when I think of the word agitator, I can't help but think about a dish, uh, a dishwasher or a washing machine. Everybody know that that thing that's in the center of a washing machine is an agitator. Amen. And the main purpose of an agitator is that is to get clothes clean but beat out the dirt. Yeah. Are y'all with me on this? Some days we try to accommodate people and other days we turn into agitators. Amen. I found that that was a great secret of the great civil rights leaders that most of their existing life, even slaves on plantation, were trying to accommodate their white masters. Oh, y'all don't want to hear this kind of preaching. But there were times when their rights were violated, and in order for you to get the uh, opposite of the adversary to understand where you're coming from, you had to be turned into an agitator. Amen. Are y'all with me on this? Amen. We find that Jesus was a, a rebel, and he tried real hard to accommodate people by performing all kinds of miracles, but there's one of the few times in scriptures that he went from accommodating to agitating. Well, Y'all don't know where I'm going with this. Huh? You mean to tell me Jesus has got on people's nerves? That's right. It's a true fact, and I don't think you want him on your nerves. It's one thing to be upset with people, and, and we use the expression, you're agging me. You're troubling me. You're bothering me. And, and the most of our life, we try to get along with people and try to be accommodating. Everybody look at somebody and say, either you're accommodating, or are you going to turn into an agitator? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay, you're going to get it in a minute. You might not understand it now, but it's going to dawn on you. I know what he's saying now, because some of y'all are good agitators. And you ain't trying to accommodate. Yeah. I didn't hear too many amen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Amen. Here in chapter 19, starting at verse 28, we, uh, St. Luke chapter 19, verse 28, you got to say amen. St. Luke chapter 19, verse 28. It talks about here that, and when he had thus spoken, he went before, ascended to, up to Jerusalem. When he did all the wonderful things that our Lord and Savior did, he decided that it is the last week that I'm going to be alive on earth. I've been here 33 and a half years, and now I must go down to Jerusalem. And as he ascended down to Jerusalem, as he oftentimes from a child, even as an adult, he realized this is his last time down to Jerusalem. And he came to pass when he was come now to Bethany, uh, Bethany, and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, uh, he said to of his disciples, he said in verse 30, saying, go ye into the village over against you. There, there, and if you look at other scriptures, there's a fork in the road. He says, and in which... At the entering, ye shall find there a coat tied, whereupon ye uh, never man have sat, no man ever sit. 
I want you to go over and I want you to loose that coat and bring him to me. And Jesus know all things, said in verse 31, if any man try to prevent you or stop you or ask you in reference to why are you loosening or taking him, thus sir, you shall say to them, because the Lord have need of him. Everybody say the Lord, the Lord have, need him. have need of him. Uh huh. See, it, it, the man who knew that this coat that no man had ever wore on, that one day that he had set aside this coat, uh, that he wasn't quite sure, but scripture is being fulfilled here that uh, that Christ will come humble riding on the fowl of an ass. And y'all might hear some words that sound strange, but I'm going to say it anyhow. And the word says that uh, Christ knows all things. And told him if any man stop you, ask you, just tell him. Uh, the cold word here, the Lord have need of him. Amen. Verse 32 says, and then they that went uh, their way found, as Christ has said, and has said unto them, as they were loosening the coat, the owner, the owner of the coat, who know that it was his, had a purpose for this coat, recognized that these men came and got this coat, uh, said unto them, why you sleep the coat? And they just simply said, the man, the Lord have need of him. Everybody said, the Lord have need of them. See, when Christ needs something, he needs it. Amen. And we ought to accommodate him. Amen. Oh, come on, somebody. Y'all a little slow on me. Yeah. He said in verse 34, and they said, Lord have need of him, verse 35 said, and they brought him to Jesus, and they cast their garment upon the coat, and they set him upon him. In other words, he got up on the coat, and as they went, they spread their clothes in the way, and when he was come now, now and descended to Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of disciples began to rejoice and praise and worship and thank God with a loud voice and all the mighty works that they have seen, saying, Blessed be the King that cometh in the name of the Lord. Amen. Peace in heaven and glory in the Most High. Yeah. Verse 39 says, And them no good Pharisees and Sadducees and scribes began to watch and observe, and among the multitude saying, Master, you need to tell your disciples to shut up, to be quiet. And verse 40 says, And when Jesus looked around at the crowd that was crying and hollering and screaming and praising God and calling out, Hosanna the Most High, he answered and said to them, And I tell you that, I tell you what, if these should hold their peace. Oh, y'all ain't with me right now. You see, sometimes we need to accommodate God. And other time, because we're standing for God, we need to be an agitator. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. He said, if they show their peace, the very stones will immediately cry out. Amen. I don't know about you today, but ain't no rock going to get praising God for me. Amen. Ain't no rock going to be praising God for me. Amen. Ain't no stone going to be praising God for what he done for me. Everything that God done for you, you ought to give him the praise. Don't let nobody hold you back. Don't let nobody draw you back. You ought to give God the praise for he's worthy to be praised. See, they was accommodating Christ by praising him. And because they tried to, the crowd, the Pharisees, uh, with nothing but troublemakers, wanted to stop the crowd. Mm -hmm. See, they were getting jealous now. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Verse 41 says, And when he had come near, he beheld the city, and he wept over it. He cried over Jerusalem, saying, If thou had known, even thou, at least in thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thy eyes, for they shall come upon thee, that thy enemies shall cast a trench about thee, a trench about thee, round about and keep thee on every side. Verse 44 says, And shall lay thee even with the ground and thy children within thee, and they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another, because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. 
Deep stuff, deep stuff. It took 46 years to build the holy city of Jerusalem. And Christ said he can raise it up in three days. They didn't understand it, but verse 45 went on to say, and he went into the temple. And you might not know this, but in verse 45 and other parts of Scripture, the Bible said in the process of him going into the temple, he was making a whip. He was, he was plotting cords together. And he had plans for the temple that day that nobody had no idea what he was going to do. And verse 45 said, and he went into the temple and he began to cast them out. Cast out them that sold their in and them that brought. In other words, the money changers. That if you was a foreigner and you had to buy a lamb or goat or a turtle dove or if you wanted to transact business in Jerusalem during the feast time, you had to see those that were in charge at the money exchange table. And what was happening there is that they were accommodating all the people. But Jesus didn't like what he saw. And the Bible said he had planted a coin. And when he saw what they were doing, he began to whoop the hell out of them. Oh, y'all don't want to hear that kind of preaching. Oh, you don't want to hear that. The pastor just cussed. Oh, you didn't have the hell whooped out of you. Your mom and daddy have whooped the hell out of you many times. Oh, my God, you don't want to hear that today. Look around to somebody and say, God is on your side. But every now and then, every now and then, God, Christ got to turn into an agitator. He got to flip the script on them and let them know that I may be from God, but I don't like what you're doing here. I see with my own eyes. I, I hear with my own ears. I see what's going on here. And my father's house, my house that used to be a house of prayer, now have turned into a den of thieves. And he began to whoop the hell out of them. And can you see them all running and flying? In every direction, the Bible said he took the, the money changers table. He wasn't concerned about the money that was in their bowl. He turned them all over. Money went everywhere. Pigeons went everywhere. Uh, the animals went everywhere. People were running every direction. Now you say, wait a minute. Now I don't recommend you try that. Look at somebody and say, I don't recommend that you go to somebody's church and try to overturn the money changer. Uh-huh. Because them two big ushers going to grab you. Put you in a headlock. Are y'all with me on this? Come on, somebody. Only Jesus could have done that because, remember, he had an exuberant crowd. He had a huge crowd that followed him everywhere he go. And they followed him right into the temple. And when they saw what he was doing, you need to understand something very clear here. It's so easy for man to get caught up and to accommodate those of the world and those of other languages and cultures than to be an agitator and to bring to the realization of how wrong they really are. If you're going to be a good preacher, a good pastor, you got to learn from time to time how to aggravate and agitate. If our preachers sit here and just water it down, you would say, oh, he's all right. But every now and then, I like to get on your nerves. Come on, somebody. Look at somebody and say, every now and then, and then. you got to learn how to agitate. All our lives, we try to please other people, try to accommodate them. And the minute things ain't going right, that's when the agitation comes out. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. You saw our great leaders of the, of the movement, of the marches, they came out as agitators. Because when the laws ain't right, the people ain't right. Amen. Oh, my God. What are you saying, Pastor? The Bible said he began to whip them with those cords. Beat them. Come on, somebody. It's one of the few times in Scripture where Jesus break bad. Look at somebody say, you didn't know Jesus could break bad? You didn't think he could break bad? Come on, somebody. You know, this is full flight. Even the disciples wasn't prepared what they were going to see when Jesus, they were wondering, why are you up there planting all them cords together? Come on, somebody. And Jesus, I'm going to whoop all they tell. 
I'm going to tell them they don't know who they're dealing with. Come on, somebody. You ever, you ever had your mama or granddaddy? My mama used to take switches, and, and she would take the leaves and, and peel the leaves off. Are y'all with me on this? Take the leaves and peel the leaves off and begin to plant and start talking to you. Didn't I tell you not to go back out there no more? Didn't I tell you? I didn't told you once. I didn't told you why. You went out there and you didn't do what I told you to do. Get on in there. Pull them clothes off. Get buck naked. Mama, get buck naked. I want flesh. I'm going to bust the skin white. Right. No, y'all don't want to hear that. You don't want to hear that. I'm here to tell you that brought you to a place of understanding that mama, as much as mama tried to accommodate you and raise you the right way, she tried to turn into an agitator. Yeah, to get on your nerve. Come on, somebody. That's why many of y'all respect your mama today. But today's society, today's society says, don't hurt that child. Don't whoop them. Don't whoop them. Don't whoop them. They, they sweet. And the whole while they slapping their mama in the face or they slap their daddy upside their head and they poke fun and think it's cute when they're a child. But it ain't cute when they're 20, 25 years old. Come on, somebody. My, my, my. Amen. Wait, what are you saying? When he turned all the tables over, Amen. money, animals went everywhere. People ran in all different directions. Amen. They thought, is this the Savior? Amen. Is this the Lord of Lord and the King of Kings? Then the turn agitator? He didn't turn rebellions on the people of God? What's happening to him? Because you need to understand something very clear. He remember as a child coming up, he saw something in 30 years short. He saw his father's house. There was a house of prayer. But they turned around into nothing but deer and the thieves. Amen. Nothing but Alibaba and the 40 thieves. Amen. Oh, come on, y'all. Ain't like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Amen. He got so angry. He sent them all out running. Yes, he did. You heard me said he whooped the hell out of them. Amen. My mama beat me one time, or two or three times in one day. Every time I went up on the hill, did not tell you, bam! Come on, somebody. And my daddy, he should have been called Zyro because when he would pull off his belt, he was like, pow, 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 pow. pow. I mean, it looked like he hit you about two or three times before it was all over with. And my daddy was not one like my mama, chase you around in a circle. And long before I know Jesus on a personal basis, I would be calling him Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. That's man. I felt like Michael Jackson. I was hollering and screaming all over the place. But my daddy, he wouldn't even waste no time chasing. Since the time of my daddy, he would let you go to sleep. Lay down in the bed. You be sleeping up something. He come and say, uh-huh. Pull the cover back. And he turned into Zyro. And that little belt, my daddy had one of them old, them old belt that was too long that the tongue hanging out. Never mind, that was country. What I'm trying to tell you now, don't be upset when God chastises you. Don't be angry when God corrects you. God loves to be an aggravator, an agitator in your life that can correct you. Amen. You see, when things come your way, that's for correction. Yeah. You have to thank God that he corrected you. Yeah. He loves you enough that he corrects you. Yes. Huh. Yes. Stay with me now. He says in verse 47, and he taught daily in the temple, mm -hmm. but the chief and the scribes and the chief of the people sought to destroy him. See, they sought to destroy him because he was a rebel. He was a rebel. Amen. He rebelled against the establishment. Come on, somebody. Amen. See, his will didn't come from man. His will came from God. Amen. Verse 48 says, and could not find what they might do, for all the people were very attentive to hear him. Amen. See, people were scared to do anything in, to Christ in front of anybody else. That's what these chief priests and Pharisees was up to, to no good. And it came to pass in verse 21, on one of those days as he taught in the people, in the temple. Now remember something. After he ran and turned the money changers and the tables and ran out of all the animals and the turtle doves and the pigeon, 
If you look in the book of Matthew, chapter 21, you will find immediately after he ran all these people that were doing these things wrong, he turned from being an agitator back into a commentator. Amen. He accommodated the people. He started laying hands on those that were sick. Praying. He just got through running and beating all those that were doing wrong, but he invited those that were doing right and needed help right back into the temple. Amen. See, God got a way of restoring us back yes. 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 to a place yes. where we got away from. Amen. You have to thank God for him restoring you. Amen. David said he restored my soul. Amen. He lead me in a path of righteousness. For his name's sake. You ought to thank God for Jesus' name's sake. You ought to praise him for the victory he gave over, over your adversary. He says in verse 20, he says in verse 22, and they spake saying, tell us, by what authority, what authority does thou these things? Who gave you authority to whoop the hell out of them people. You heard me say it. Who gave you the authority to come right into this temple and teach the way you do? Now you have to remember something. Jesus is 33 and a half years old. He's no kid. He's been around. And he knows his way around. He knows where he came from and he knows where he was going. They were trying to figure out who is this man. And Jesus put him to the test. Chapter 20, verse 3 says, And he answered and said unto them, I will answer you. I will also ask you one thing. And if you answer me, I'll answer you. Amen. Verse 4 says, The baptism of John. You knew John. He was a prophet. He lived among you. And he baptized. Was his baptism from heaven or was it a man? That's a real good question. And to show you that these men were not ignorant, they responded in verse 5 by saying, and they reasoned within themselves, saying, if we say from heaven, he will, then he will say, why then believe ye him not? But if we say a man, all people will stone us, for they be persuaded that John was a prophet. See that? And verse 7 says, and they answered that they could not tell which she was. They knew the answer, but they didn't want to say it. See that how the enemy is? See, you, you got to be able to be smarter than your adversary. Amen. And you got to be able to agitate your adversary. Everybody say, agitate, agitate. your adversary. Yeah. So you're going to be dealing with all kinds of things in life. And this may sound strange, but I want you to understand something real clear here. Based on the Constitution of the United States of America and the bills of rights that we have in this country, many times our people went through things that they've been through and they was accommodating. But when we found out the real deal, Holyfield, we came to be agitated. Because we knew there was a right in the eyesight of God and it wasn't right in our heart. Now I know I'm taking you to a place you already that might not be familiar. There's an unjust judge. And this unjust judge owned property and land. And from the very beginning, we find that this unjust judge uh, had power over this widow's land. And when his widow's husband died, she wanted what rightfully belonged to her. It's important that you and I understand this unjust judge found himself in a position that wherever he went, this widow was on his case. She was always bothering him about dealing with things that rightfully belonged to her. She went from letting things be and accommodating him to a point that something that was rightfully heard, she began to be an agitator. Yes. Somebody say agitation. agitation. Well, I know you've been distracted for a moment, but keep your mind focused. Yes. Keep your thoughts focused. Yes. The Bible said that Jesus said this man was an unjust judge. From the get-go, he won't even do it right. 
You got some people that are bent on doing wrong and treating you wrong until you learn to call it on them. Somebody said, turn it from accommodation to agitation. My, my, my. See, you got to be able to be like that, that agitator inside of a washing machine. Throw all the dirty stuff in there and say, Lord, let your word beat it out of me. Ha. Huh. Let your word cleanse me and make me whole. This woman, they wanted that money, that property. You see, this unjust judge had already made up his mind. He's going to make a big profit off of this. But he forgot one thing. He forgot this widow had God on her side. Look at somebody and say, if God be for you. I said, if God be for you, then who can be against you? You name somebody that can come out against you. It can be Jeff Bosa. Come on, somebody. They're on Amazon. It can be the richest man in the world that can set tone to come against you. But if God be for you, no man can be against you. And even if they came up against you, you think they want to try to accommodate you, but the minute they find out you're an agitator. Amen. Now, sometimes we marked as an agitator, but when you're on the side of righteousness Amen. and you're aggravating people, Amen. you're going to get what belongs to you. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. I know you might not understand because this course is over even at a point when you stop and think this woman had need of her property and land. Yes. This unjust judge had already made a deal and had no intention of giving this woman. He was an unjust judge. Yes. And sometimes the judge think he's above the law. Amen. Are y'all with me on this? Yes. But even the judge that sit on the superior court, whether it be the state or the supreme court, come on somebody, has to be brought into judgment. Amen. Somebody say amen. Amen. So it doesn't matter whether he's an unjust judge and think things can go his way. This woman followed him day in and day out. And she bothered him and troubled him and aggravated him and agitated him until he came to his mind and said, I'm going to have to get this woman. I'm going to have to give her what belonged to her because she wearied me. She bothered me. And God is trying to teach you in our purpose in life that many times when we need something from God, when we need a healing or a deliverance from God, if we'll just learn to get on God's nerve, Amen. if we'll learn to pray through what we're going through, Amen. if we'll learn to hold on to our faith and faint not, Amen. man, I to always pray and faint not. Amen. And if you hold on to your faith, God will see you through it all. Don't let nobody fool you. God will answer your prayer. Yes. Don't let nobody deceive you. God will answer your prayer. Don't worry about the coronavirus. God will protect you. He'll put a shield over you. The Bible said this, this unjust judge, he ran into the wrong one. Come on, somebody. This widow had in her mind, I'm going to get what belonged to me. Are y'all with me on this? Look at somebody and say, I'm going to get what God got for me. <laughs> say it like you mean I'm going to get what God got for me. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. But if something is rightfully yours, you can claim it because it's in the deity of God, divine purpose for your life. If it's healing, God can give it to you. If it's deliverance, God can give it to you. Whatever you desire in your heart, the Bible says God knows what you need even before you ask it. How could he know what I need? Because he'll answer you in the desires of your heart. Look at somebody and say, God can answer you in the desires of your heart. Lord, have mercy. Nobody knows what's in your heart, but God knows what's in. And whatever you need, God's got it. Whatever you want, God's got it. Whatever you're going through, God can see you through it all. Why? Because God knows how to accommodate you. And when you obey his word and keep his stature, he said, ask what you will. Ask and believe as if you already received. 
and you shall have it. This woman got on that unjust judge nerve so bad, he had to say, look, we can't deal with this. Give that woman what belonged to her. Let me get her out of my head. Let me get her out of my hair. Let me get her out of my life. Come on, somebody. Don't you realize no man is going to find peace until we all got peace? Don't you realize that? Our great leaders fought hard through difficult times for you to be where you are today. Many sacrificed their lives for you and I to have what we have today. And many times we take for granted what God has done. Look at somebody said, don't take for granted what God has done. The word said, all things, all things work together for the good. For them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. If you got a purpose in life and God knows that purpose, God will accommodate you in fulfilling your hard desire. Yes, he will. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Look at somebody that says, accommodation, accommodation can turn into agitation. Can turn into agitation. That's Amen. Amen. Now, some of y'all like to aggravate and don't like to accommodate. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Wherever you go, a restaurant, come on, somebody. You can tell a good waitress because she wants to accommodate. That's right, man. Come on, somebody. She's patient and waiting on you. But you get one of them waitresses that's popping gum and rocking her last hip. Come on, somebody. You're getting ready to have some problems right now. Come on, somebody. you got to be careful with that one. Come on, somebody. And you don't, don't want to agitate her if she's going to accommodate you because she's liable to drop your steak on the floor and rub her feet on it. Come on, somebody. She's liable to go in the bathroom and start scratching in places. Oh, you don't want to hear that. Come on, somebody. There are people today that are sick in their mind, and they can't stand the fight the sight of you having what you have, and they are willing to accommodate you. And that's why you say, just put my stuff in a box. I'll take my doggy bag and leave. Come on, somebody. Don't let nobody fool you. The enemy is out to destroy you. Don't let him deceive you in his, in his demeanor and how he tried to approach you. You guys are learning to call it on him when you see it. That reminded me when I go back in, in time with King uh, Hezekiah, and I think about Isaiah when God first called him. And the Bible said when God first called Isaiah, the Bible said he saw a vision. And the Bible said he saw the Lord high and lifted up. He said he looked so high, Junior, that God's train filled every corner in the temple. And he said he looked around the throne of God and there was angels with six wings, two to cover their heads, two to cover their feet, and two to fly with. And they flew around the throne of God crying out one to another, holy, 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 Lord God almighty, which is to come. Don't you realize that God is a holy God? God is a righteous God. God is a just God. You got to give God a chance. You got to give God an opportunity. Don't be there and say it's too late. When he saw this great vision, when he saw this great thing that God has showed him, he was given commission by God. But even Isaiah said, Lord, I am an unclean man with unclean lips among an unclean people. And as he looked to the throne of God, the Bible said there was an angel, one of the siphons that picked up the cone on the altar was so hot, he couldn't pick it up with his hand. So he picked it up with a tongue. It was uh, so hot and so holy. He took the tongue and picked it up off the altar. And he flew right up to Isaiah. And the Bible said he put it on his mouth. What did that mean? It signified God had cleansed him of all his guilt, of all his sin. And then God cried out, who 
will go for me. Let me come out and say, who will go for him? Oh, y'all want to hear this. Sometimes we're so busy accommodating people, we forget to agitate them sometimes. Come on, somebody. Oh, y'all don't want to hear this. Isaiah realized, I'm going to have to preach to these people. I'm going to have to proclaim the message, even if they don't want to hear it. Sometimes in the family, and if you like my family, every family has got an agitator. Look around and somebody say, who's your agitator? Every family member has got an agitator. You know how I know? Because all you got to do is invite them to a cookout. Invite them to a Christmas party. Come on, somebody. Look around at somebody and say, I hope you ain't the agitator. Sometimes they can aggravate you in a way that they get on your last nerve. Now, I'm talking about there are two kinds of agitators. There are good agitators and there are bad agitators. Come on, somebody. You can tell the bad ones go, they're going to get on your nerve, but they're going to get on your nerve in a rotten way. Amen. This man Isaiah went to accommodate the people of God and proclaim the word, but because the people hardened their hearts against God, God said, who should I send? And Isaiah said, send me. I'll go. But when you raise your hand to do what God tells you to do, it ain't going to be all about accommodation. Sometimes it's going to be about aggravation. Some of y'all sitting up there right now, and I'm aggravating y'all. Come on, somebody. He aggravating somebody? How you ag somebody? We use it. You use the slang in the black community. You're egging me. Ain't that what we say? You're egging me? Leave me alone. You're egging me. Leave me alone. Stop bothering me. Come on, somebody. And we say agitation. It's important we understand that Isaiah was a prophet at the time of King Hezekiah. And I want you to understand something about King Hezekiah. The Bible said he was a righteous king. He was a just man in the eyesight of God. He did that was pleasing in the eyesight of God. But word got around that the king, Sennacherib of Syria, Syria, was to take it over the whole land. He took over the northern tribe of Israel, and then he started looking at Jerusalem. And Jerusalem was God's holy city. Now, I don't know about you, but there are some things you need to leave alone. Look around somebody and say, there some things you need to leave alone. See, when you cross the line, you are in God's demand. The right. Bible said that, 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 that this Sennacherib, the king of Assyria, told Hezekiah, I'm coming down to take Jerusalem, and I'm going to claim it for my own. Now listen to this. I preached this before. The Bible said that Hezekiah, the great king of Israel, was so fearful and afraid of the king of Assyria who had already destroyed and defeated 46 cities, he knew he was not a match for this king. Amen. The Bible said he sent ambassadors uh -huh. up to meet with Sennacherib. Mm -hmm. How much money do you need for me to stop you from attacking Jerusalem? Yeah. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm trying to tell you the devil is trying to aggravate you and you need to tell them I'm not going to accommodate you. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. He's trying to aggravate you. Get on your nerve because you got to remember that God gave you authority and power over the adversary. Hey. So it's another act. Was thinking, okay, I know. All the way back to Saul and David and Solomon, I heard about these men, these great kings, and all the wealth of Israel. The Bible said that, that Hezekiah was so scared, he was going to try to pay the devil off. Amen. Look at somebody say, you can't pay the devil off. 
No, look around and they owe you some money and say, you can't pay the devil off. You can try to pay him off and it's not going to satisfy him. Because he's going to take what you got and he's still going to attack you. So Nazareth uh, was waiting for Hezekiah, and listen to this. The Bible said he was so scared, he went into the temple and the holy place, took off all God's goals off the wall, and sent them up to the adversary. Just to try to keep peace, and the Bible said, so Nazareth took the gold and the silver, and he still tried to come down. But he forgot one thing. The God we serve, his house is a house of prayer. And so another way, try to turn his house into a den of thieves. And I want you to know, when you come against God, God comes up off of his throne. Are y'all remember, they have God to be sitting down and give his attention where God stands up. Amen. 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 Lord, have mercy. The Bible said he was so afraid Hezekiah, after he gave his money, now you didn't pay the devil off, he's going to come and take what you got? What kind of friend is that? He ain't your friend. Look at somebody say, the devil ain't never been your friend. He ain't never, never will be your friend. Why? Because he's trying to get your soul. He's after your wealth. He's after your fortune. He's after your soul. The Bible says that the Hezekiah got so fearful and afraid because of the terror of the king of Assyria. The Bible said they traveled in the night like packs of wolves. And you can hear their army, 185,000 strong, that the ground trembled. Come on, somebody. When they crossed the land. And the Bible said that Hezekiah cried out and called for the prophet Isaiah. And Isaiah told him, don't worry about Sennacherib. He won't even be able to shoot one arrow in Jerusalem because God is going to take care of him. When you realize that God is on your side and he's going to take care of every problem that you're dealing with, you can put your trust in him. Look at somebody and say, you can put your trust in the Lord God mighty. You can put, see, we so busy trying to accommodate man, we need to learn how to accommodate God. We so busy trying to accommodate one another, we need to learn how to accommodate God and satisfy and please God. For the Lord said, if you delight in the Lord, he will. If you delight in the Lord, he will. I'm going to say it again. If you delight in the Lord, he will give you the desire of your heart. Look at somebody and say, you are the delight in the Lord. Do that which is pleasing, meaning which is delight in. If you're going to accommodate anybody, learn to accommodate God. By serving him in the beauty of holiness. And Isaiah told him, don't worry about him. And you can see Hezekiah said, but he's got 185,000 strong. Don't worry about him. But they got swords. They got weapons of weapons of warfare. They got to Don't worry about him. God got this. Look at somebody say, God got this. Don't you realize when you're dealing with issues, God got this? Put it in God's hand and see on God fix the fight. In other words, if you accommodate God, God will accommodate you. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. No doubt about it. If you accommodate God, God will accommodate you. If you delight in the law of the Lord after the inward man, God will give you the desire of your heart. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. How many God answered their prayers this week? Come on, somebody. How many of God answered their prayer this week? Amen. Now see, you ain't even been through the week and God had already answered your prayer. Amen. See, you waiting your hand for last week. I'm talking about this week. Right. And you need to throw up both of your hands. God had already answered your prayer. You have to thank God in advance. You have to praise in advance. You don't know what you're going to go through. You don't know what's going to take place. You don't know what's going to happen. But God had already accommodated you. God had already met you where you need to be met. All you got to do is trust. I don't 
know about you, but I, I like that word, accommodation. Amen. Especially when it comes to pleasing God. Amen. Amen. Now listen to this. Amen. I'm coming home. The Bible said that when Sennacherib, the king of Assyria, when they come down and the men in the valley of a hundred, listen to this, 185,000 men of war come to take Jerusalem. Isaiah reminded Hezekiah, God built Jerusalem. God built the holy temple. His name is in Jerusalem. And he's not going to let the adversary come and take what belonged to him. Don't you realize when you belong to the Most High, when you're a child of the King, when you live by his commandment, he's not going to let any disease, or he's not going to let any affliction, he's not going to let any pain overpower you. Isaiah told him, God going to take care of the enemy. And the word says, in the midnight watch, a deaf angel. Listen to this. One angel, a deaf angel, came through the land. And before the sun could cut the sky, God said the angel killed 185,000 men. Wait a minute. You mean to tell me one angel can kill 85,000? And yet, though it was in the flesh, can you imagine in the spirit realm that when you cry out and you cry out to God with all your heart, what God would do on your behalf because God loves you just that much, he's willing to accommodate you? So when the enemy try to aggravate or agitate the king of Israel, God says, not only have I got this, but I'm going to accompany you. Yes. Amen. Yes. I'm going to accomplish that which I have spoken. Amen. Are y'all with me on this? It's important to understand you can accommodate, but at the time in your life, your accommodation might have to turn into an aggravation. Yes. Amen. Why? Because some people think they can get everything over on you. Right. Amen. I'm going to say that again. You got people doing you on your job. They'll try anything to get past you. But when you catch them, when you highlight it, when you bring it to conscience, now they don't like you no more because now you didn't turn from accommodated to an agitation. And you got to be careful because now they don't want you on the job. They don't want you working there no more, Charity. They don't want you living here no more. They don't want you praying to God no more. Why? Because you told them from accommodating me. You was all right. right. Amen. Until you told the truth on me. Amen. You was all right when you were lying with me. You was all right when you were sleeping with me. You was all right. But now you didn't turn tired on me. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Somebody said, mm hmm. Because y'all ain't saying that you Come on, somebody. God will kill your enemy dead. If I were you, I wouldn't get in the way of God's anointing. When God has anointed something, be careful because that anointing can heal or it can destroy. Sometimes we think, oh, this was meant to be. But did you get God's blessing on it? Come on, somebody. Because either you're going to come under the blessings of God right. or you're going to come under the curse of God. Yes. And it has a lot to do with your heart and how you treat people. Yes. Sometimes we can hold on to things that can cause high blood pressure. Sometimes we can hold on to things that can cause heart disease. Sometimes we can hold on to things instead of letting it go. Call it like you see it and let it go. Yes. Look at somebody who said, build a bridge. And get over it. No, y'all didn't say it right. Build a bridge and get over it. Because sometimes things weigh on your heart, weigh on your spirit, and it'll weigh you down. And from what I understand, Apostle Paul said, last night, every sin 
And sometimes it ain't sin. He said, lay aside every sin and every weight that so easily besets you. Sometimes it ain't sin. Sometimes it's way down stuff. Come on, somebody. Your family can weigh you down. Your loved ones can weigh you down. I got people there that come out. I look at the phone. I ain't even got the answer. When I see 919. Come on, somebody. God, forgive me. Sometimes I look at it and say, not now. Come on, somebody. Because there's always somebody wants something or needs something. And I have to tell them real quick, only God. I got a, a phone number called yesterday about a problem that's way down south. I said, brother, I ain't going to waste your time or mine. Tell them like it is. Sometimes you got to stop accommodating people and start being an agitated. Now let me just say this. The worst kind of fight you're going to have is a fight with yourself. Look at somebody said the biggest fight you're going to have is when you're fighting with yourself. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying when you get on your own nerve, you're in trouble. Now right. some people get on their own nerve. They can't stand to be by themselves. They can't stand to talk to themselves. They can't stand to reason through what they're dealing with. They get mad with themselves and they slap and say, don't do that no more. Uh-huh. If you don't turn it over to the Lord, they're going to put a straight jacket on you and turn you over to the mental institution. Because the problem with our people in our community with mental sickness is that instead of they talking it through and getting their burden out to the Lord and casting it upon the Lord, they think they can handle it. And I'm here to tell you, there's a lot of sick people that are self-medicated. Amen. 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 Praise God. This is Pastor Watkins from Community Revival and Outreach Ministries. I trust that you enjoyed that wonderful service we just uh, had, and I trust the Lord that it touched your heart and your spirit, and it also inspired your soul. But beyond just listening to a message, we also ask you to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And how you do that, you just simply ask and bow before Christ. And if you're willing to lay hands upon your TV or bow your heads right where you are or sitting, if you just bow here with me and we'll pray the prayer of faith. Heavenly Father, we truly thank you for all things in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that you forgive us of all our sins and have mercy upon our soul, and that not only you save us, O Lord, from our sins, but, O Lord, that you would sanctify our hearts and sanctify our souls as well as, O Lord, baptize us with the Holy Ghost and that with fire. We accept you, O Lord, into our hearts and our life. We confess our sins and we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that God raised him from the dead. And by believing and accepting this, O Lord, we claim to be saved in his holy name. We give thanks and praise for all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I trust the Lord that your heart is fixed with the Lord and that your blessing will be assured and that you'll come out and fellowship with us. And if not with us, your, your own local church in your area, and that God will be a blessing to you until we see you again. Take care and God bless. Bye-bye.